<clears throat> Hi guys, welcome. It is Monday. I hope you're having a good Monday. I thought I would come on here and make a video about travel tips. So I'm in my car, so <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, carnivore travel tips. So sometimes I used to think when I started carnivore that you couldn't travel when you were doing carnivore. Like I was, I wanted to wait until I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off for a long time until I I thought, okay, well, I have to be home. I can't travel if I'm doing carnivore because I thought it was going to be too complicated or be too hard to find food. And actually, it's the easiest thing in the world. So, um, but I didn't start when I was traveling. I started when I was home for a month. And I think it just, it did help me a little bit just to be home and not, because it was such a shift from what I was doing and um, I needed to be home so I could like wrap my head around it but otherwise it really is easy to do um, so maybe if you're just starting maybe it's a little too tough just from a mental aspect but if you are if do, been doing it a while don't be afraid to travel when you are doing when you want to do car carnivore all right so I have some ideas so first things first whenever you are going to travel on carnivore i like to book uh, an airbnb you can get 40 dollars off your first airbnb stay in the link below um, with an airbnb most of the time they have a kitchen so you can filter that and you can pick to have a kitchen or you can stay at like a residence in has a kitchen um the hilton home two i stayed in recently they had kitchens um, it just makes it more affordable so you don't always have to buy a steak for $30 or be stuck in the drive-thru. Um, you can make really whatever you want. The Residence Inn and the Home 2 Suites, there are several others, maybe the Staybridge Suites, but those are the two that I'm really familiar with is the Residence Inn. They even have grills out by the pool. Yes, <laughs> they even have grills out by the pool that, so you can bring your own steaks and grill them there by the pool. So that's a really cool thing. And then there's a social aspect too where you might see some other people who are into grilling or just cooking for themselves and they're all hanging out down there. Uh, so that's kind of fun. We did that recently when we went to Charleston. Then also we even we even boiled seafood in the room. I know it smells, <laughs> smells gross, but actually it wasn't too bad. Uh, and we boiled like old, we used Old Bay and we boiled a bunch of seafood and then we just melted butter in the microwave and when we ate it and it was so, so good. Cause we were in South Carolina, we had to get some fresh shrimp. So that was a full, cool thing um, that you can really, really dig in and cook for yourself, just like you're at home when you are out. And um, again, the save $40 off your first Airbnb suite uh, down in the link below. So also besides getting that, you want to think ahead a little bit. Like sometimes what I do is uh, pack some, some boiled eggs. That's always a safe thing to bring from home. Um, you know, there's different types of trips. So if you're in an airplane, you can uh, pack some things from home that'll, you'll probably just get about one meal you wouldn't want to pack more than probably one meal um, for the airplane, but you can either fast, a lot of people fast, or what I do is pack some boiled eggs. You can pack some, you could cook some bacon. Um, you could even have some steak from the night before. So remember, meat is going to be safe for four hours outside of the fridge. After that, you are going to want to refrigerate it. So. Um, you can even bring a cold bag onto the plane. I have friends who've done it. You can you can even pack frozen meat in a suitcase if you, as long as you check it. So don't be afraid to push those um, ideas a little bit out of the box because there's a lot of things you can do that you maybe just are thinking, oh, it's not allowed. Well, it, as long as it's not liquid, you can pretty much bring anything uh, food wise on a plane. So I've had almond butter or something like that before I was carnivore taken for me, but they don't really take things that aren't liquid. So as long as it's not a liquid, they're not going to take it. So you can pack a lunch and they're not going to take it just because it's food. As long as you're not bringing liquid butter or something like that. Um, 
All right, so you can always do burger patties on any kind of trip. You can pack them. You, I've even had friends that would, would freeze them, then let, they were cooked already, uh, freeze them, let them come up to room temperature while you uh, are traveling. And then, so that's a great thing. I don't like cold food, so I, I like to let my meat, even if it's cooked, just let it come up to room temperature or if it's already cooked and frozen, again, that just gives you longer before you, uh, before it's gonna go bad. So you can have, um, you can cook it, you can just let it come up to, even I've had steak where I have just set it kind of in the sun for like 20 or 30 minutes, just to let it come up to room temperature. So it's not that cold, you know, slimy, especially with the fat. I don't like that slimy fat. Um, but that's been really, once it's room temperature, it's very tasty, you know? And I mean, you have to be careful about food poisoning. I'm not saying just do whatever, but um, I'm not really into the raw thing yet. So um, some people eat raw egg yolks. I'm not there yet, really. I mean, I can put them in a smoothie or something when I used to do keto, but I didn't, I didn't have it really just eaten them plain. Maybe I'll get there. Um, so like I said, burger patties, steak, boiled eggs, of course, you're, if you're at a restaurant, you can always get an omelet or something like that um, with eggs. You can you could make a frittata with cheese. I don't know if you eat cheese. I don't really eat a lot of cheese, but you could put uh, frittata with cheese and bake it before you leave home, and then it's kind of wrap it in a napkin, and you've got something portable there. Um, I like I like to get whenever I'm out at a restaurant, I like to get. Uh, if there's, if possible, I like to get brisket. So if you're traveling and you see a brisket or barbecue place, <clears throat> of course you could get barbecue pork. The main thing is just to get, be careful about the sauces and the, <clears throat> and ask them ahead of time, like, do they have a lot of sugar that they use in the marinades or in the seasonings? Because um, the place where I go the most here in Nashville is um, Martin's and they, only put salt and pepper on their brisket. So you wanna make sure they're not putting a lot of crazy stuff on the brisket, uh, but uh, barbecue is a great choice. Also, you know you know how you always see on little, on buffets and stuff, they have those little tiny butter pa packets. So that's a great way to get your, um, your fat. You don't wanna have fat-free anything. Um, so I bought before a rotisserie chicken at Whole Foods and I hate, dry chicken so i would wrap the the white meat in some butter packets around the butter and i would eat it like that because i cannot eat dry white chicken you know uh then another good thing is smoked salmon a lot of times i'll have packages of smoked salmon if you're just running through a grocery store you can grab that and it's something you kind of roll up and just eat that it's you know ready to go no cooking you can always have cheese slices uh, my favorite is the cheese uh, cheese sticks, mozzarella cheese sticks, mm. but I really don't, I really try not to eat those because that's kind of like a, a trigger food for me. <laughs> so I don't eat the cheese sticks, but if you eat cheese, cheese is a very portable thing to take on trips. Canned seafood, so you can get sardines, oysters. Um, the main thing is be careful about the, be careful about the, the oil they put it in, like the Cottonseed oil, canola oil, usually it's cottonseed oil, which is really gross. Um, I, I would usually buy it in olive oil or in water, and you can just kind of drain that off, um, even though olive oil is, but it's better than cottonseed oil. It is a, um, it is not, it is a fruit, you know, olive is a fruit, but still it's better than poisoning your body with cottonseed oil. Okay, then there's cold cuts. You know, cold cuts are kind of iffy. Sometimes they have sugar. Sometimes they have like some kind of preservative corn or something like that. Um, but it's not going to kill you if it's just for one day or something. Uh, <clears throat> just try to avoid sugar when you're doing cold cuts. I like the Applegate brand. It's pretty commonly available. And then, um, so that's something you can get from... Uh, from grocery stores, you can buy pepperoni. Pepperoni lasts a lot longer than cold cuts. You don't have to refrigerate it as fast. Um, again, just be careful about the preservatives and stuff like that. I mean, it's not gonna kill you one time, but main thing is sugar. 
And sh that brings me to jerky, which jerky is really hard to find, no sugar. I think I heard that Til I think it's Tillamook has a brand, has a, a one without sugar that's new or something. A lot of people were telling me it's Sprouts or something like that. I've never seen it. Um, Biltong, I've heard about. I haven't tried it. They say you can get, that has no sugar. Um, maybe the way that they make it, they don't need as much sugar. I don't know that much about Biltong, just people have told me. Um, also there is, I think I said before, cooked bacon and then um, rotisserie chickens are really easy. Again, be careful. Don't get the ones with the sugary sauces and stuff on the outside. Just get the, try to get the plain or like the salt and pepper or something like that. Um, so those are some travel carnivore ideas that you can use next time you're out and about. Um, and of course, if you're going in the car, I always pack a cooler and then I just have like a picnic when I go out. You know, you can find a roadside stand, have a, have a um, picnic. Or if you have like food already with you, you can make really good time because you can just eat it in the car and you don't have to even stop. So just depends on how big of a hurry. And like I said, sometimes I'll stop in at Wendy's. I know McDonald's and Wendy's don't put extra stuff in their burgers as far as seasonings or spices. Um, it's just beef and, um, and salt and pepper maybe. So that's a pretty good option for on the road. I mean, I'm not saying that's a good option for every day but for staying on your plan, it's pretty good. And I don't, I don't like it that much. I can definitely taste the difference between that and something homemade, but it's better than starving. And I avoid the cheese because I really don't like American cheese at all. And it's mostly made out of oil. So avoid the cheese unless you can get like a cheddar or something like that, which I don't, I don't know if they have that because every time I've asked, it doesn't seem like, they seem like I'm speaking another language. So I say, forget it. I'll just have mustard maybe, or just eat them. I'll put a bunch of salt and just eat them up. So um, those are some carnivore travel tips and just you know plan ahead a little bit. Think about where you're gonna be going and what's gonna be available there. Sometimes you can look on Yelp and, or you know, <clears throat> another app like that and figure out what's gonna be there. I know one thing we like to do when we travel is go to the um, Brazilian steakhouse um, or also I go to just the the plain kind of all American steakhouses that are really not fancy or not, they're fine, you know, but they're not like exciting that much because they're probably the same as what you have at home. So like Outback or Logan's or things like that, but those have the best kind of value on steaks and things like that without, you know, overpaying at a really fancy steakhouse for probably the same thing. Um, but the Brazilian Steakhouse, I think that is worth it. We don't go there very much, but it is really fun on a special occasion. And um, yeah, so if you have any extra tips about traveling, just leave them down below. And it's been really fun talking to you guys today and we'll see you next time. Okay, make sure and subscribe and like this video and share with a friend and we'll see you on the next meaty episode. Thank you, bye-bye.